بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله ما بعد. So welcome everyone. I'm going to now just do a bit of revision on a GNAV. You're welcome to join if you like. I'm going to uh, share a link as well. If you want to jump on the panel, you can. Let me uh, find out if there's a way I can do that. I'm sure there is. There we go. Present to everyone. Okay. So now get the I'll get the link. Right. So let me post the link in the YouTube chat. And I should be able to paste it, but it's not going. Oh, I know why. There would be. So there's the YouTube page. I'll paste the link in the chat. Should go now. Yeah, there we go. That's the link. Whoever wants to join, just click that link and you'll be able to join. All right. So what question are we going to look at first? Tell me if you can see my screen. Stop sharing my screen. And I'll start again. If I can find it. It would be struggling with the technology again. All right, that's the page I want to share. And to do that, I have it from Hangouts, screen share. There we go. I'll do it. So I've got two pages open. Right, so the section I'm doing is general navigation and charts. So here we can see, uh, let me actually, I'll, I'll change something. I'm gonna share, share my whole screen, stop. Full screen. Switch account. Form final. And I'll paste the link again. Here we go. That's it. And I need to share my screen again. Sorry about that. <laughs> screen share, full screen. 
start screen share, present to everyone. That's it. Good. So chart scale. Um, I'll tell you what, I'll start again. I'm going to test myself. Section, hold on, select subject, general navigation, topics, charts, sequentially. I'll do the first 10, generate exam, start. All right, so the first question, a polar stereographic chart is used for navigation. A straight line between 75 south, 166 east, and 78 south, 154 east is drawn on this chart. So the way we can tackle that is by doing something like this. Actually, control set. So the, the question is asking about Item A, which is here. Item B, which is here. So we want a straight line that goes from, you can see it's two different latitudes. So from A to B, and the true track angle of the rum line is 223. We want to draw a circle. Have two circles actually. There's one, and then draw another one, slightly bigger. And let me send back. There we go. Change the color of that. There we go. So this is a southern hemisphere. hemisphere. Now, just a sec, did I check, did I uh, put the link? Yes, I did. Whoever wants to join the Hangout, you can join me. Just click the link in the chat. I'll paste it again one more time. You need a desktop. If you've got a mobile phone, I'll have to send you the mobile link. I'll see if I can do that in a moment. Um, here we go. So the first, the lower latitude is 75 south. So this blue edge around the side, let me, um, there's a text box, there's a text box. 75 south is here. And 78 south. Is over there. Let me change the color of the blue one. Color. There we go. So it's 78 south and 75 south. And we're going to go from 166 east at A, so this is A. Mm -hmm. And this is B. 166 East. So first of all, with the Southern Hemisphere diagram, we're going to be looking up at the Greenwich Mean Line from beneath the Earth. So that's zero. slash 360. And uh, yeah, so we're, we're going to go from 166 east. So that's approximately here. And so we're going to go from this point to B, which is at 154 East, which is
that's 90. So that's going to be 154, somewhere around here. So the line we want to take is from 78, so it's from 75 to 78. Whoops. I'm going to take a line from here to here. See if I can make that a little bit bigger. There we go. So that's the journey. So what's the question asking us? Calculate the direction, the true direction of the straight line in position B. So the straight line in position B, what? Calculate the direction of the true track of the straight line in position B. Oh, I think this polystereographic question just took me off course. Um, we don't need to do all that, do we? We can just do the, the formula. So if you've got, actually, let me um, take this, group it together. I can go over here. There is something else we can do. Southern hemisphere. Got two meridians. A, 75 south. B, 78 south. So from 166 to 154. So we're going westbound. From 75 south to 78 south. Okay. And we need some sort of semicircular line. A curved line. Let's try, try that one. I'm not sure how to use this line here. Something like that. Something like that, sorry. Okay, so we're going from A to B. Now, where is A, where is B? We can find the text box again. There we go. A, 166 East. No, it's not letting me draw a text box. Anyway, I'm taking way too long to answer a single question. But anyway, if this first line here is 154 and this second line here is 166, we're going to go this direction. Ah, format shape. Yep, so I'm going to go this direction. So from 166 to 154. And the way to do that is we're going to use the conversion conversion formula, which is change of longitude times sine mean latitude. In this case, the change of longitude is 166 
minus 154, which is 12, times sine mean latitude, sine mean lat. So mean latitude is 75 plus 78 divided by 2. 76.5, sine 76.5, sine 76.5, 0 0.97, 12 times 0.97, 2, 3, blah, 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 and so times 12, 11.7, approximately 11.7. So that's the conversion. Um, what's the question asking us? The true angle of the rum line is 223. Two, Calculate the direction true of the straight line in position B. So we know also there is something called D, I, I, D. In, in the Northern hemisphere, hemisphere, you have a decrease to an increase. And in the Southern Hemisphere, you have a decrease to an increase. So as you, as you see the line coming westbound, it's going to increase in angle. So if this line here, the rum line is two, two, three, Uh, sorry, that's two, two, three. Where's my draw text? Two, two, three degrees. This is going to be more, is that going to be more or less than two, uh, two, two, three? Obviously it's going to be more. How much more? Well, if the conversion angle is 11.7 divided by two, by two, which equals five point eight three. Five point eight three. Then we just take two two three plus five point eight three, which equals two two eight. 229, 229, approximately 229. So, oh, so I've accidentally clicked the button here. But yeah, <laughs> sorry about that. But yeah, calculate the direction of true of the straight line in position B. And the answer is 229, exactly as we calculated. There's an image here. Um, 229, yeah, ignore these, if some of these images don't make any sense. Anyway, there you go. Calculate the direction of straight line position B. Next, so question two. A route is flown from 85 south, 100 east to 140 40 west, okay? At 100, okay, a route is flown from east to west, and on the same latitude. Um, at 160 degrees east, the grid track and true track on a polar stereographic chart with a grid oriented on are respectively, okay, so here, we're gonna need the diagram like this. Is it southern? Southern hemisphere, okay. So it's going to be the same latitude. So ignore the first one. Actually, let me put this on a new slide. There we go. Get rid of this. So the question is saying 85 south. Put this to the side. Yep, 
ignore that one, okay? And it would be, this is our working item. I'm going to ungroup. This is not needed. Or is that? Move that to the side. So if this is 85 south, we're going from 85 south, 100 east to 140 west. So 100 east, it's not far from 90, there's 90, let's say that's 100. And we're going to how far? 140 west. So I'll put this here. 140 west. So if we go west, where's 140? Uh, that's 90, that's 10, 130, let's say that's 100, 140. So our straight line is going to go from 85 south, so the same latitude, but we're going to go 140, 100 east to 140 west. All right, so let's put this here. We're going to go from there to there. Um, and we have a grid track which is oriented on 180 degree meridian, which is kind of loud. I'll take one of these, control C. So this is the orientation of the grid track. And they were asking us to measure that at 160 east. So if this is 100 east, that's 180. So 160 is gonna be like here somewhere. So what's the question? At 160, what will the grid track and the true track be? Okay, so if you look at that line, what angle is it making with the grid track? It's, if you were to turn it all around, Group, new slide. All right, so let's turn this around. This angle here. going to be our grid track. Okay. Now what is that angle? It's less than 90 degrees. Do we have any answers there for grid track less than 90 degrees? We've got 70 degrees. That's the only one that's less than 90 degrees. And 90 degrees true. Let's see. What would true be? So true would be the angle from From where? Let's turn this round. True would be the angle. Hold on, I didn't. Um, let's group this all together. Okay, true would be the angle from here. Oh, at which location? At 160 east, the true track. Okay, so if this is 160 east, no, that's not 160 east. 160 east would be
something like that. Let's say that's 160. So what's the angle from this line Let me get a circle. Sorry. No, it doesn't give me that option. I'll just have to use this. So anyway, let's, uh, so we want this angle here. So it's kind of like that. So it's 360 minus this angle. That would give us true. So that's uh, less than 90. Let's just say that's 70. 360 minus 70 would be 290. So something in the region of 290 would true. Oh, no, 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 but that's the Southern Hemisphere. So it would be going that direction. So it would actually be more than 90, more than around 90, it would be this angle. From here to here, that angle. So one more time, I will rotate this. No, not that. There we go. Whoops, I didn't group it all. Here we go. So the grid track would be um, something less than 90. So we're, the only one that's there that's less than 90 is 70. And the true track would be from this line here to there. And it goes this direction. So it's going to be bit more than more than 70 so it's going to be something like 70 and 90 so b to me the right answer is b and it's correct yeah it just took way too long to answer because i'm using the computer let's look at the picture something similar to what we drew Okay, close that window. Good. Next. Next question is a VOI situated at position 74 north, 94 west, local variations 50 west, polar stereographic chart supplied with the Greenwich grid is used for navigation. To proceed along magnetic radial 238 inbound, an aircraft has to follow a good track of, okay, I can't stand these polar stereographic questions. I'm not very good. I need to revise that subject. But what we can do is, VOI situated on the 74 north latitude. So I'll just get rid of that picture. Go back here. Copy this. All right. So here, this is 74 north. Um, get rid of that. And I'll remove these items as well. Now, on a northern hemisphere map, this is going to be the Greenwich line. So this is the North Pole. And we're looking at it from above the Earth. All right. Now, the question is, 
That's 74 no north, 94 west. 94 west, something like that. So at this location here, get rid of that, actually, I'll keep this. So we have a VOR here, VOR at 94 west. However, there's a local variation, which is 50 degrees west. Remember the same variation west magnetic best. So the magnetic flow um, coordinate is going to be one, uh, 094 plus 50, which is 144. One, four, four west. Okay, so I need to move that line. Let's say that's 144. And the question is asking, a polar stereographic chart supplied with a Greenwich grid is used for navigation. To proceed along magnetic radial 238 inbound, okay, an aircraft has to follow a grid track of, all right. So looking at this diagram, Rid of that. Let's group. Here we go. So looking at the true chart or the true track, the radial of two three eight true. This is magnetic, isn't it? Oh dear. Oh. So 238, you add 50 for the magnetic variation. Oh no, that's 238 magnetic. Okay. To proceed 238 magnetic, so the radial from here, 238 is going to be something like that. That's 270. 180, 200, something like this. Let's say that's 238. That angle, this angle. So 360 minus that is 238, right? Um, what are they asking us? To proceed along the radial inbound. Okay, so if that's 238, So two, three, eight, we, we, we would actually say two, three, eight inbound is going to be minus 180, which equals 58 degrees. And that's magnetic. So 58 degrees magnetic. So this direction here, if I um, begin arrow type, this is going to be fifty-eight degrees. That's the angle. True. No, magnetic, sorry, magnetic. According to the, um, oh, that number's not turning. There we go. So, now we're in the Northern Hemisphere. 238, 58 is that direction. According to grid, 
That's the grid arrow. Let's move that up here. So now, what's this angle? It's more than 180, less than 270. Looks a bit like 200 grid. What's the options? It's not more than 280, 270, so it's going to be 193. I think 180 is down there. That's more than 180. It's going to be 193. Ah, I got it wrong. What happened there? Must be something to do with the magnetic. Firstly, convert the magnetic track to a true track. Okay. The magnetic track inbound is 238, radial 238, minus 180, which is 58. Yeah. The true track inbound to the VOR is 58 take some variation west magnetic best so we take off the 50 you get zero eight okay and then convergency that's what we didn't do so for some reason we were using true coordinates i, I was using magnetic Yeah, because you have to convert from true to anyway. I'm not I'm not very versed on this polar stereographic stuff. I need to practice that. Next. Question four. Route A to B. Another stupid question. Sorry, I can't stand these ones. Route A to B is drawn on a polar stereographic chart with the grid aligned with the Greenwich Meridian, the true track of the straight line at A. What's the grid track? Okay, route A to B, the stereographic. A true track, and they want a grid track. I don't want to answer that now. I need to revise it. Okay, at 47 north, the chart distance between meridians 10 degrees apart is 12.7 centimeters. All right, so with regards to scale, we know that chart distance, well, how do I do this? I'll draw it differently. Let me just draw a line. Very thin line. Uh, let's draw a thicker line. how to make it thicker. All right, so CD over PD. So chart distance over earth distance. The question is saying, at 47 north, the chart distance between meridians 10 degrees apart is 12.7 centimeters. And the scale of the chart at 47 degrees north approximates to, okay. So at 47 degrees north, 10 degrees is 12.7 centimeters. So if we just say, CD equals 12.7 centimeters. Earth distance, we've got 10 degrees at 47 north. So we can use a departure formula. Equals change of longitude times 60 
times cosine latitude. So if we say departure equals 10 degrees times 60 times cos lat, what's the latitude? 47 degrees north, cos 40. So we're gonna say 600 times cos 40 is 0.77. From 600, that's 460 approximately nautical miles times 1.852 to get kilometers, which equals 851 kilometers. So 851 times 1,000 gives us meters times how much to get centimeters times 100 gives us centimeters. So we can just add one, two, three, four, five zeros, can't we? It's going to times this by Times 100. The actual answer on the calculator is 851228588. Let's say 859. So this. So 85, what's that, million? 85 million, 122,859 centimeters. So all we do is put that here and the 12.7 centimeters goes here. So 12.7 divided by that answer is 1.49. What are the options here? That doesn't make sense. Hmm. What did I do wrong? Scale, 12.7 centimeters. equals 10. So I did 600 times cost 40, 460 nautical miles times 1.852, yeah, it was 851 kilometers. Let me do my calculation again. So 12.7. Let me do, did I do something? Hold on, let me check. Okay, so I did something wrong. I did cos 40, it's cos, cos 47, cosine 47. So that should be 47. So 10 times 60 is 600. Cos 47 is 0.68 multiplied by 600 is 409. Times 1.852. 757 
758 kilometers. So um, multiply by 1,000 times 100. Okay, so it's 75. Seven eight three six five eight. Now, if we do twelve point seven divided by that, let's bring up the calculator. Try that again. 12.7 divided by 7578365.8. But 1.68 pretty much. Let's try. Let's choose this one. Okay, the answer is correct. Did we do everything right? Let's see. So we said departure 10 times 60. So we get 600 times 0 0.68. 600 times 0 0.68, yep. 409, 409. They used the CRP5. We didn't. But to get kilometers, they got six, 760 kilometers. We got 758, fair enough. So 12.7 divided by 76 million. So 758 divided, so 12.7 divided by 76 million. Let's try that on our calculator. 12.7 divided by 76, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. It just shows us in this format. I don't know how to get that. But anyway, 1.67. Hmm. Not sure why that comes up in this format compared to the other one. Anyhow, that's that. We've got the answer right somehow. A straight line drawn on a chart measures, hold on. Yeah, uh, so I just keep an eye on the viewers. Mahmoud Bilal says, properly you should divide the 85M over 12.7 to get the scale, really? So let's try that. If I take, by the way, whoever wants to jump on, here's the link. I'll put it in the chat again. Okay, so if I take the, we said 76 million. So 76, one, two, three, one, two, three, divided by 12.7. Okay, that gives us 5.98. Okay, so it's that way around. Thank you for that, Mahmoud uh, Bilal. <laughs> I needed that. Thank you very much. Got me out of trouble there. Big up. Oh, just a second. I'll see if I can get the mobile link for anybody that wants to join. Bear with me. I can find it. Uh, 
Stay with me a moment. Okay, join using a link and And it's not letting me right now. No, it doesn't let me. Anyway, whoever wants to try that link, let me know if it works. If it doesn't work, let me know as well. So the next question, a straight line drawn on a chart measures 4.63 centimeters and represents 150 meters. So let's see. So a straight line drawn on a chart measures 4.63 centimeters. and measures, or well, represents 150 nautical miles. So I'll put that here. Actually, I'll go down here. 150 nautical miles. So if I convert that to centimeters, that's gonna be multiplied by 1.852. 150 times 1.852, 278. Two seven eight approximately, and we're going to multiply that by one. Sorry, that's kilometers. I didn't mention times one thousand times one hundred. So we're going to say that times one thousand times one hundred equals twenty seven. Million seven hundred and eighty thousand. Yeah, centimeters. So we're going to say four six four point six three. Let's try both ways again. Four point six three divided by that. Four point six three divided by. 1.6, if I do it on my calculator, I get 4.63 divided by, I get one over six, uh, one over six, one, two, three, one over six million. Let me try the other way around. 27, 780, one, two, three, divided by, 4.63, get 6 million. Okay, so that's the technique that Mahmoud Bilal taught me. Thank you, Mahmoud Bilal. Really appreciate that input from you. You corrected me. So 4.6, so this is gonna be 27, 7, 8, 0, 0, 0, 0, divided by 4.63 equals 6, million so this the answer is one to six million okay shall i choose that yes alhamdulillah <laughs> yeah thank you thank you brother there we go that's that one uh next If I took this long in the exam, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely fail. Alhamdulillah. Chart scale is one to one hundred, sorry, one to one million eight hundred and fifty thousand. So they've given us the scale first here. This is going to be. That. Let me roll 
that out. The chart distance between two points is four centimeters. So four centimeters, and we know X divided by four centimeters should give us that. Earth distance is approximately, oh, I accidentally clicked the answer without intending to and the answer was correct. But anyway, the way I would do it is this multiplied by four centimeters. Let's try that. That times four equals times four. That's seven thousand seven million four hundred thousand. Um, what is that? Seven million four hundred thousand kilometers. Let's see how they did it here. One divided by that equals four. So one equals earth distance, one times earth distance equals that times four. That that's the correct thing. So we got seven million four hundred thousand. That's what we got here which is 74 kilometers, correct. And then we want to do what? Convert it to nautical miles. The way I would do that is 74 divided by 1.852. That gives, yeah, pretty much 40 miles or 39.95 nautical miles. So that's the correct answer. Thank you, Mahmoud Bilal. Yes, correct. 40 nautical miles. You're very quick at this. All right, next. A straight line on the chart, 4.89 centimeters long, represents 185 nautical miles. Okay, the scale of the chart. So we're going uh, top to bottom again. So 4.89. So we've got 185. We're going to convert that to... Oh, what happened there? For some reason, the Bristol thing, when I copy text, it um, submits the answer without me clicking anything. Oh, gosh. So let's do it anyway. 185 nautical miles. And what else did we have? 4.89 centimeters. So 4.89 and 185. 185. So 185 nautical miles in kilometers, 185 times 1.852 is 343, approximately. And we multiply that time uh, by times 100 equals 34 million. Two hundred and sixty-two thousand centimeters. So we're going to take thirty-four million two hundred sixty-two divided by four point eight nine. We have a scale of approximately seven million. Yeah, one to seven million. Thank you very much. Next. I'll try and avoid clicking the, the answer, how, how that happened. The constant of a cone, oh, don't give me this. The constant of a cone of a Lambert conformal conic chart. Now, the polar stereographics is when you look at the, the chart from above. Um, there was Lambert and there was another one, Mercator. Now, one of them is from this side, and the other is from a sort of 45 degree angle. I think the Mercator is the one that's directly on the side. So we need, we're being asked about the Lambert. What we asked about, yeah, Lambert. So that's the one that's like a cone, correct? It tells us there anyway, conformal conic chart. So it's cone, like a cone. 
The constant of the cone is quoted as 0.3955. At what latitude on the chart is Earth convergency correctly represented? Anybody know how to do that? Let me know because I have to look it up. What's the constant of a cone? I don't remember. Hmm. Constant of a cone. No idea. I've forgotten that completely. I don't have to do the one sixth rule to calculate that, do I? Uh, the best way to find out is just click and see what the answer is. Um, yeah, let's just click one. What do I think is a reasonable answer? 66, no, 23.18. On a Lambert's chart, convergency is correct along the parallel of origin and the constant of the cone or convergence factor is the sign of the parallel of origin. So 0.3955 is the sign of 23.18. How do we know that? Don't know. No idea. Okay, the distance measured between two points on a navigation map is 42 millimeters. The distance measured between two points on a navigation map is 42 millimeters. The scale of the chart is one to one million six hundred thousand. The actual distance between these two points is approximately hmm, the actual distance. So this is uh, departure we have to do. So we've got the scale. Distance between two points is 42 millimeters. So let's do one, six, blah, blah, blah. Div oh. Whenever I do control C, it no wonder the control C. It does that. Hmm. Anyway, let's try that. One million six hundred thousand. How many millimeters did we have in the question? 42, so I'm gonna put 0.44. Sorry, was it 42 or 44? 42, so I'm gonna put 0.42. So this divided by 0.42, 3,809. That would be kilometers divided by 1.852, something's not right. Let's see how, how the answer was calculated. Oh, so to go there, that one divided by one six, blah, 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 equals 42. 1 million 600,000 times 42 millimeters, Earth distance is 67.2 kilometers. Which calculates to 36.3 nautical miles. So what did they do? 1,000, 1, 1, 600,000 times 42. 1,600,000 times 42. That's 67 kilometers divided by 100 
divided by 1,000 to get kilometers. 672 kilometers divided by 1.852 to get miles. So 362. Oh, wait, I've done something wrong. Okay, 36.3 nautical miles. Yeah, okay. I must have left in a zero. Finish assessment. So yeah, I didn't do too well on that. Gonna try again. Hmm. Charts, do the first 10. Polar stereographic. Okay, this is something we drew before. That was over here. 75 south to 78 south. Yep. And they wanted the true track angle of the run line is 223. Calculate direction of the track of the straight line in position B. And we did that using this conversion formula. We've got the conversion angle is here, added it to the uh, direction of the run line and it gave us the true track. And the true track is 229. The next question, I think that was 7090, wasn't it? Because that was over here. was this diagram on the right. That was the same latitude, 85 south, which is here. And we went from 100 east to 140 west, which is this direction, that arrow. At 160 east, the grid track and true track would be if the, um, grid is oriented to downwards. It would be, the grid track would be less than 90 and the true track would be, would be about 90. So D is the correct answer there. Yeah. Don't ask me how to do that. I'm not going to read all of that. Let's see what Mahmoud Bilal says. Uh, okay. Oh, you're doing the calculation. Yep. Then let's see. We'll come back to that question and then I'll read what, what you described. So a VOR is situated at position. Mahmoud Bilal, you should come on the, um, on the hangout. Can you join me for, a vo for the voice chat? And we can talk to each other. Let me know if you can. All right, a VOI is situated at position 74 north. Local variation is 50 west. Yeah, I got this wrong last time. A polar stereographic chart supplied with a Greenwich grid is used for navigation to proceed along magnetic radial 238 inbound. An aircraft has to follow a grid track of, yeah, I remember this because I, I did it using the magnetic, whereas they said to convert it to true and then get the grid value. So that was this one. So two, three, eight, we got zero, five, eight. Boy, the VOI is situated at position 74 north, 94 west. Okay. Local variation is 50 degrees west. A polar stereographic chart supplied with a Greenwich grid is used for navigation to proceed along magnetic radial 238 inbound. An aircraft has to follow a grid track of, all right, so we need to convert from magnetic to true. Um, here we go. So 
So this was a Northern Hemisphere diagram. 94 West would be there. Is it West or East? 94 West, okay, I bet. 94 West. Oh, well, that's the wrong, let me, let me do this again. There's the link for the Hangout. Let's see, has anybody joined? See if I can get the mobile link as well. No, that's not working. Anyhow, um, boom, 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 boom. so the question was saying ninety four west, seventy four north, ninety four west. Let's take this all over again. So 74 north, the Greenwich line is going to be like that. And 94 West. 94 West. Local variation is 50 degrees. Let's just start with the 94. A polar stereographic chart supplied with Greenwich grid is used for navigation. To proceed along magnetic radial 238 inbound. So if we um, group this together. If that was uh, true north from here, BOR is down here somewhere. The radial inbound is 238 magnetic. 238. Two three eight is less than two seventy, so it's something like this. Inbound, okay, would mean that's going to be fifty eight. So 58 is true. Fifty-eight is true, and the magnetic variation is fifty west. Variation west magnetic best. So true is going to be less than fifty-eight, isn't it? So zero zero eight. So we'll say. Uh, zero, zero, 008 is true. And they want the grid reference. Do they? Yeah, the grid track. 
Well, the grid track is going to be north that way. That's the grid track. So that's less than 180, let's say 170, 160. It's not 193, it's less than 180. And it's more than 90, so I'm gonna say 103. Okay. Ah. Let's see how that works. The true track inbound to the VOR they said the magnetic track inbound to the VOR along the 238 radial is 238 minus 180, which equals 58. We want to subtract the 50 um, degrees variation. That gives 0, 08 degrees true. Correct. Okay, then they did convergency. Convergency equals 0 degrees east to 94, so the convergency is 94 degrees. By referring to the diagram, it can be seen that at the local meridian, true north lies to the east of grid north. True north lies to the east of grid north, correct. So it's going that way. Um, therefore, convergency equals 94 degrees. Convergency east, true track least. So 58, 58. Convergency 94 east. Yep. And grid is 102. 94 plus 8 equals 102. Yep, inbound. Okay. I need to practice that a lot because I'm not too strong at that. Okay, so root A to B is drawn on the polar stereographic chart, not another one. Um, with the grid aligned with the Greenwich Meridian. The true track of the straight line at A, 75 north, 10 west. Okay, let's do this, is 80. So root A to B, polar stereographic. They want the grid track, okay. So the true track, A, of oh, the straight line at A, 75 north, 10 west, is 80 degrees. So if we take this, ungroup, seventy five north, ten west, seventy five north. So that's the latitude, 75 north. And are we, yeah, we're in the northern hemisphere, so that's correct. 10 west. Is this line? That's about 10 degrees, isn't it? Okay. So at this location, the true track of the straight line is 80 degrees. So straight line, it says the true track of the straight line at A is 80 degrees. So if this is, let's do this again. If this is A over here, like that. So a line going from there is 80 degrees, true track. So 80 degrees is something like, let's 
like this. That would be 90. That would be 80. Okay, what's the grid track when passing the meridian 50 degrees east? Where's 50 degrees east? There's 90 degrees east, 45 degrees. So 50 is something like that. And if we were to extend this line out to here, the grid track when passing the meridian 50 east would still be this, something like around 90 degrees. I'm gonna choose 90. Hey, you got it right. Ah, I'm not gonna read all of that, sorry. That's just boring. Okay, again, that's, so alhamdulillah, we finished this, the stupid polar stereographic questions. At 47 degrees north, the chart distance between meridians 10 degrees apart is 12.7 centimeters. So at 47 north, chart distance, all right, so this is a scale question again, all right? I should know this by memory, but I'm just gonna go through it as if I haven't read it before. At 47 north, so that's given us, the, we need to get the cosine of 47. The chart distance between meridians 10 degrees apart is 12.7 centimeters, and we want the scale. Okay, so we did that before, that was here. So let's do a new slide, there we go. So we're going to say scale is uh, 12.7 centimeters. We're going to say something divided by, let's say X divided by 12.7 centimeters equals scale. And what is X? So 10, so this is the departure. Departure. 10 times 60 times cos 47, cosine 47. And that's going to be 600 times cos 47 is 0.68, which is 409 nautical miles times 409 times one point eight five two to get kilometers. That's seven hundred and fifty eight. So five eight. And we do times one hundred or well, one thousand times one hundred get centimeters. which is 70, let's just say 76,000 or 76 million, sorry. 76, one, two, three, one, two, three, 76 million centimeters. So to get the answer, we're gonna take 76 million centimeters divided by 12.7 centimeters. It's approximately 96 million. Okay, 96. What are the options? I've done something wrong, haven't I? Oh, I was supposed to divide it by 12.7. Divided by 12.7. Divided by 12.7. Okay, that's 60 million. Or 60. 
So it's six million. Yeah, it's going to be six million. The answer is here, six million. Okay. Next. A straight line drawn on the chart measures 4.63 centimeters and represents 150 nautical miles. So in this case, actually, let me leave that previous um, thing there. A straight line drawn on the chart measures 4.63 centimeters. and represents 150 nautical miles. So we don't need all of this because it comes to 150. The chart scale is, so we'll convert 150 to centimeters. 150 times 1.852 times 1,000. times 100 is 27 million 780 thousand. So that's what we're going to divide by 4.63. divided by 4.63 equals 6 million, again. Yep, correct. Thank you for that, Mahmoud Bilal. There's Mahmoud Bilal, big shout out to you, pal subscribe to you <laughs> okay next given chart scale is one million oh, sorry one to one million eight hundred and fifty thousand the chart distance between two points is four centimeters okay so we've got one to one million eight hundred and fifty thousand oh, I pressed the answer again anyway, one million to one hundred and fifty thousand. So um, centimeters, chart distance between the two points is four centimeters. So that's gonna be four centimeters. So the way to calculate this is 1,850,000 times four. It's 74, sorry, 7,400,000. 7,400,000 centimeters. We're kind of reverse engineering this. So that's going to be, that's 100. One, two, three. So it's going to be 74, isn't it? And we'll convert that to, so that's times 100. Whoops, divided by 100. Divided by 1,000. Uh, so we've got 74 divided by 1.852 to give nautical miles. And that's 39.96. In other words, we've got 40 nautical miles. The answer there is 40. Correct. A straight line on the chart, 4.89 centimeters long, represents 185 nautical miles. The scale of this chart is approximately, a straight line on the chart, 4.89 centimeters long, represents 185 nautical miles. Okay. 
So 4.89 centimeters. is 185 nautical miles. 185 nautical miles. So we do 185, 185 times 1.852, 343. times 1,000 times 100, that's 34,262,000. And we've got 4.89. The answer is seven, about seven million. It's actually seven, five, four, three, or five, four, four. It's actually seven million. Uh, what's the answer here? One to seven million. Yep, got it. Got it. Next, the constant of a cone of a Lambert conformal conic chart is quoted as 0.4. I don't remember this. Uh, what latitude on the chart is Earth convergency correctly represented? Was it 2135 or oh, 2318? Okay. On a Lambert chart, convergency is correct along the parallel of origin. And the constant of the cone, convergence factor, convector. Okay. The distance measured between two points on the navigation map is 42 millimeters. Okay, the scale of the chart is one to one, one million six hundred thousand. The actual distance between these two points is approximately. So if we do, They said the distance between the two points is 42 millimeters. And the scale is one to one six hundred thousand. One million six hundred thousand. This is 42 millimeters. Hmm. So we'll say 1,600,000 times 42 millimeters is 67,200,000. Is that millimeters though? 67, 200,000. Should be, I don't know if that's millimeters or what. Anyway, if I convert that by multiplying, so I divided by 100 and divided by 1,000, that gives 672. But if it's centimeters rather than millimeters, I'll give it. So one option is 672, the other is 67.2. Divided by 1.852. So 363 nautical miles. Or yeah, because if, I, if we use it as millimeters rather than centimeters, it's going to be 36.3. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, because that's 67,000, 67,200,000 millimeters, not centimeters. So it's one extra zero. 
finish the assessment. That time we got eight out of two correct. Great. I'm going to try again now. One more time. Yeah, 100%. Let's see. And I'm not going to bother working it all out. I'm just going to go off memory. Next. Okay, this is 229. This is 1790. This is 103. This is. <laughs> Grid track when passing meridian 50. Oh, yeah. Grid track is going to be 90. 47 north, the chart distance between meridians 10, 10 degrees apart. Scale of the chart. Don't remember. Um, let's just say 10, uh, what was it? Cos 47. Cosine 47 times 600, 409 times 1.852 times 1,000 times 100. That's 76 million approximately. And we we'll divide that by 12.7. The answer is 60. 60 million, sorry, six, six million. That one. Good, straight line drawn on a chart between 4.63 centimeters and represents 150 nautical miles, the chart. All right, so we need to convert 150 times one, 1852 times 100, it's 28 million divided by 4.63, that's 6 million again. Okay, chart scale is 1 to 1 million 850,000. The chart distance between two points is four centimeters. Earth distance is approximately. So if the chart scale is that, so we're gonna reverse this one, aren't we? So 1850, Eight one million eight hundred and fifty thousand times four is seven million four hundred thousand. You divide that by one hundred, divide it by one thousand, that gives us seventy-four. All right, so seventy-four nautical miles, or is that kilometers? Seventy-four kilometers. Divided by 1.852, 40 nautical miles. So the Earth distance is C. Got it. Alhamdulillah. A straight line on a chart, 4.89 centimeters long, represents 185 nautical miles. So 185 nautical miles, we want the scale. So times 1852 times 100, that's 34,262,000 divided by 4.89. We have around 7 million. That's that. And the constant of a cone, don't know how to calculate this, but it was 2318. If I do <clears throat> sine 2318, I get a syntax error. Sine 23, let's try that. That's 0.39. Okay. I do 2318. That's that in degrees. So it's 23.3. So sine 23.3 is 0 0.39. Five, five, okay. So I'm gonna do that next time. So if the constant of the cone is that, what latitude? Okay. 
And they're saying on the Lambert chart, convergency is correct. Blah, blah, blah. Constant of the cone is the sign of the parallel. Okay. Next, the distance measured between two points on the navigation map is 42 millimeters. So 1,600,000 times 42 millimeters divided by 100. That's going to be 1,000 centimeters. Isn't it? No, sorry, 1,000 for divided by another thousand for kilometers. So we've got 67.2 kilometers divided by 1.852 to give miles. So it's 36.3 nautical miles. Yep, done, alhamdulillah. So now I can do those first 10 questions quite easily. Big shout out to Mahmoud Bilal for, for helping me with that. I'm going to take a break. It's time to pray. Thank you for watching and thank you for your help, Mahmoud Bilal. Subhanallah. Inshallah, I'll come back on um, a little bit later. I might get something to eat first. Thanks for, for watching and thanks for your help.